This screencast is on the production's possibility curve, which is also known as the production's possibility frontier. In this screencast, we're going to understand what is a PPC. We're also going to look at the four characteristics of the PPC. We're going to understand why the PPC looks like it does. We're going to look at points at, that are inside, on, and outside and talk about what each of them mean. And then lastly, we're going to talk about how to shift out the PPC. So the production's possibility curve, known as the PPC, is the maximum amount that you can produce with the given resources. The key word there is maximum. Um, the way that we describe how the PPC looks is that it is concave to the origin or bowed out. If you look at it here, it's not linear where it's a straight line, but rather it's bowed out. And that's really important. Um, in this case here, we've got two goods, goods A and B. And because it is bowed out, what that tells me is that these goods are not identical um, because the resources that go into making good B are not easily transferable into making good A. And so what we say here is that this has an increasing opportunity cost. In order to make one more unit of good A, I continually have to give up more and more of good B. Um, if we were to take like two goods like pizza and robots, uh, the resources that go into making pizza are not as easily transferable into making the robots. And so therefore, it might be easy in the beginning to take some of the resources and transfer them into making the robots. But as you continue to make more and more robots, it becomes more and more difficult to make them. So this has increasing opportunity costs. Um, if you're taking AP Micro, I would definitely look at the screencast on how to explain increasing opportunity costs because that goes into further detail um, in that one. When we look at this PPC here, we have to recognize the four assumptions that go along with it. One we've already talked about, that two goods are being made. In this case here, it's good A or good B. And it doesn't matter if you label this good A or this good B. Um, it doesn't, it, 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 as long as you've got the two axes labeled with them, um, it doesn't matter where you place them. The other thing is that you have full employment of resources. In this economy, all resources are being utilized in order to create this um, curve here for the production's possibility. The next thing is that you have productive efficiency. Productive efficiency is really key, especially with AP Micro, and that's where you're producing goods as cheaply as possible. And so we're being very efficient with how we're making this maximum amount of goods. And then lastly, we're utilizing the most up-to-date technology uh, while we are producing them. So that this is what gives you that frontier. Okay, so we've got these different points here that are either on the curve, inside, or outside. So if we talk about points A, B, and C, it really goes along with the definition. It's that maximum efficiency because you're producing the maximum capability here uh, based upon the resources that you have. And, and so this would be a country um, being as efficient as possible. D, on the other hand, is an inefficient use of resources. Um, maybe people are unemployed, or maybe just the economy isn't utilizing all of their resources. Times could be bad, and we could have like a recession or a depression, and that could cause us also to be uh, here at point D. When we uh, talk about point E, and that's beyond that maximum amount that you can produce with the given resources. And a great way to say that is that this is unattainable without trade. You can't get here on your own. You have to um, specialize in what you're good at. And if you have a least opportunity cost in one good, meaning a comparative advantage, you'll trade that with another country who has a lower opportunity cost. And that will allow the... Um, production's possibility curve to have more of both goods. So when you talk about comparative advantage, that ties in with the production's possibility curve. 
So the final thing here is about shifting out the PPC. Like how, the goal of an economy is to have economic growth. And so when we talk about it, there's many ways that we can get to that E where this whole curve itself will get to E. Um, and visually, when we show economic growth through the PPC, you have a PPC that will shift to the right. It's always important to have your arrows there when you're doing that. So there's a couple different ways that we can have economic growth. The first one we've already talked about, and that's with trade. You, you specialize in what you're good at, you have comparative advantage, and you trade with another country, and you get more of both goods. Another way is that new resources could be found. Um, maybe you there's drilling that goes on, and new oil is found, and that can be utilized to make other goods. Uh, you could have more people migrate into the country, and now you have more laborers that will allow more work to be done. Um, another way that you could have economic growth is if new technology is invented or created, but it has to be technology that benefits all types of production. It can't just be uh, producing just particular goods or um, for that. So it, new technology that affects everything is important. And then the third way that you can you can talk about shifting out the PPC, first off requires us to change good B to consumer goods and good A to capital goods. And when, another way that you can have economic growth is that if, you, if a country invests in more of the capital goods. So when we talk about capital goods, they're goods that are used to make a final product. So if you invest in more capital goods, well, these goods that are used to make a final product could make more capital goods and, or they could make more consumer goods. So by investing in more capital goods, you have the ability to make more capital goods and more consumer goods. Um, this final one, it's on, it can be on the micro exam, but it's really important for AP Macro.